Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the September 6, 2018 regular meeting of the Milford Board of Aldermen. Please join me as we salute our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Secretary, will you please take the roll? Alderman Anderson. Alderman, Alderman Anderson would like to get excused, Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Alderman Beatty. Right. Alderman Fortunati. Alderman Fortunati would also like to be excused, Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Alderman Gaynor. Here. Alderman Gurman. Present. Alderman Genitasio. Here. Alderman Golden. Here. Alderman Grant. Here. Alderman Hardiman. Here. Alderman Smith. Here. Alderman Sutton. Here. Alderman Tranquilli. Here. Alderman Beccarelli. Here. Alderman Vitro. Here. Alderman Vitale. Here. 13 present, Mr. Chairman. 13 present. We do have a forum. quorum. Uh, thank you, Madam Secretary. Mr. Mayor, we do have a presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board. Uh, there are organizations and people in the city of Milford that bring great pride to this community. And tonight I am excited to announce uh, three such organizations, three teams who have achieved fantastic things over the, the summer and things that are historic for the city of Milford. And I would like to call them up individually, each team, uh, starting with Babe Ruth, 13-year-olds. If you could come to the front of the auditorium. And in honor and celebration of uh, your accomplishments, I do have an official proclamation on behalf of the city of Milford. I also have from Connecticut's uh, General Assembly a official citation from Milford's delegation. But the official proclamation from the city reads, whereas the Daniel S. Wasson Babe Ruth Baseball League 13-year-old all-star team has brought honor and pride to themselves and our community. And whereas these players won the Babe Ruth District 3 Championship, they went on to capture the Babe Ruth State Championship, the first for the Daniel S. Wasson uh, Milford Babe Ruth program in 15 years. The team participated in the regional tournament after outlasting seven of the top Connecticut Babe Ruth programs in, in New Milford, Newtown, Stratford, Stanford, Danbury, North Haven, and East Lyme. And whereas coaches, John Wisniewski, Scott Montefort, Chris McInerney and Jerry Shea, and teammates Owen Bell, Anthony Brazel, Mike Cosmas, uh, Jason Cruz, Jack Diavignog, Cody Dennison, Joseph Gaetano, Riley Jordan, Devin LaRoche, Kian McInerney, John Nider, Matt Bacota, Dean Ross, and Tyler Shea assembled a winning combination through hard work, dedication, and enthusiasm and played championship baseball as a testament to their own abilities, coaching expertise, and desire to win. Now, therefore, I, Benjamin Blake, Mayor of the City of Milford, on behalf of all the citizens of Milford, do hereby extend congratulations to the Daniel S. Wasson Babe Ruth Baseball 13-year-old All-Star Team. Well done, men. Do you want to say, any, say a couple words? Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause. <laughs> now
Now we're doing this at the beginning of the meeting because I do know it's a school night and Milford students have not been uh, back to a full day yet. So we have to get a good night's sleep. So hopefully we'll get in and out early in this meeting. But I would like to call up the Junior Major League 12 and under baseball team to the front of the, the, the foyer. And for these fine athletes, I do have another state citation and a proclamation on behalf of the city which reads, whereas the Junior Major League 12U baseball team has brought honor and pride to themselves in our community, and whereas the team won the 12U Cal Ripken District 1 championship, this is JML's first Cal Ripken District championship since transitioning from a pony tournament to the Cal Ripken tournament tra trail. Boots pain through a no-hitter against New Canaan in the district finals. The team came within one victory of participating in the regionals after defeating quality opponents from Stratford, Greenwich, New Canaan, Ram, Newtown, and West Hartford. And whereas coaches Mike Toledo, Matt Bull, Jerry Payne, Dwayne Galegian, and teammates Ryan Bull, Callahan Casey, Conlon DeShane, Ethan Dominique, Matt Galegian, Christian Galegian, Camden Larka, Gabe Garnett, John Massori, Boots Payne, Connor Seabrooks, Matt Simon, and Ethan Toledo assembled the winning combination through hard work, dedication, and enthusiasm and played championship baseball as a testament to their own abilities, coaching expertise, and desire to win. Now, therefore, I, Benjamin Blake, Mayor of the City of Milford, on behalf of all the aldermen and all the citizens of Milford, do hereby extend congratulations to the Junior Major League 12U baseball team. Nice job. Ladies and gentlemen, JML 12U champions. <laughs> and last but not least, a very special team representing Milford far and wide, all the way to Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could call forward the 2018 Milford Little League Girls 10U All-Star Softball Team. Throughout your uh, impressive run, I was following you. I was getting uh, text message updates from uh, Coach O'Connell. Uh, on behalf of the City of Milford, I do have a proclamation which reads, whereas the 2018 Milford Little League Girls 10U All-Star Softball Team won the 2018 Connecticut 10U District 4 Championship, the 2018 Connecticut 10U Section 1 Championship, and the 2018 Connecticut 10U State Championship, culminating in their advancement to the semifinals at the Eastern Regional Invitational Softball Tournament in Jenkins Township, Pennsylvania. And whereas during the Connecticut District, Connecticut Sectional, and Connecticut State Championship Tournaments, the team was undefeated with 13 wins and no losses. <laughs> The 
the team outscored its opponents 101 to 15 during Connecticut tournament play with all players making significant contributions at the plate and on the bases. The team's distinguished itself both in the field and on the pitcher's mound. Madison Bull threw a no-hitter against North Brantford with the team exhibiting outstanding defense throughout. And that resulted in 10 of the team's 13 Connecticut tournament wins ending in either a shutout or only one run allowed. And whereas the team competed against eight other state, championship, state champions at the Eastern Regional Invitational Softball Tournament in Jenkins Township, Pennsylvania, they were undefeated in pool play, qualifying, them for the state qualifying for them for the championship round, playing in a semifinal game against New Jersey. Although the team was defeated by New Jersey with a score of three to two, it was an exciting, hard-fought contest with an outstanding team effort bringing the team to finish as one of the top four teams in the tournament and having the best record of all the teams from New England. And whereas manager, head coach, Brian Corris coaches Margaret Bull and George O'Connell and teammates Avery Falco, Madison Bull, Kelsey Flanagan, Brianna, Magdalong, Lauren Warzel, Caitlin Murphy, Emily Ruse, Sarah Donegan, Julia O'Connell, Abby Corris, Olivia Gregory, Erica Fabian, Alyssa Joy, and Caitlin uh, Desalio, I apologize for the mispronunciation, assembled the women combination through hard work, dedication, and enthusiasm and played championship softball as a testament to their own abilities, coaching expertise, and desire to win. Now, therefore, I, Benjamin Blake, Mayor of the City, on behalf of all the citizens of Milford, do hereby extend much congratulations uh, to the Milford Little League Girls 10U All-Star Softball Team. Ladies and gentlemen, Milford Little League 10U softball champions. Congratulations. And Mr. Chairman, if we can take a two minute recess while the uh, auditorium clears and kids go back to home so that they can finish up their homework. Uh, two minute recess, thank you.
My story began after I had my second daughter, Madeline. Meetings back in back in order. The next portion of the meeting is devoted to public comment. Statements are limited to the legislative function of the Board of Aldermen. The time limit granted to each speaker shall be three minutes. Residents, taxpayers, and electors may address the board at this time. The board encourages speakers not to express derogatory, insensitive, or offensive statements, or to engage in personal attacks against individuals. In order to allow everyone an opportunity to speak, I'd ask that everyone please limit their comments to three minutes. Anyone wishing to address the board can do so at this time. Please state your name and address clearly for the record. Thank you. Hello, my name is David Demet. I live at 162 Monroe Street in Milford. And um, thank you for letting me speak today. Um, I am here today. I would just like to um, voice my support for your considerance of the ordinance change regarding um, commercial truck parking and residential areas. Um, I would just like to talk about my experience quickly and give you my point of view. Um, I have also taken some photos of my house, my yard, which I would like to share with you. I've made 12 copies. I hope that's enough. Um, firstly, I would just like to say this is a very popular street with bicyclists, including myself. Sir, you want to move the mic a little closer sure. or move? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Sure, sure. Um, firstly, I'd like to just say that this is a very popular area with bikes, bicyclists, including myself. I believe this truck prevents a danger to us um, because as you pass the vehicle, it's very wide and you have to actually go out into traffic. And um, it's kind of hard. Tr cars travel fairly quickly on this road. Um, that's, and the street is kind of narrow. And when it's getting darker, it makes it harder to see the bicycles. Um, secondly, um, I'm not an environmental expert, but I, feel, I see that these trucks, at least the ones where I live, are leaking a lot of fluids onto the street, oil and what have you. There's oil stains up and down this whole area where they park. He's got three separate trucks, um, and they're all in different stages of drying, and, and you can see that they're still you know, leaking fluids, at, you know, at this time. Um, lastly, um, as far as a homeowner there, um, we live in a beautiful area in Milford. I was kind of surprised to find out that this kind of parking of commercial trucks is actually legal in Connecticut. It's quite a big truck, one of them. Um, it blocks our view. Um, I just feel it's unfair to us and other people in the city, uh, you know, I'm sure some other people have the same issues. Um, that someone that does, doesn't even live on my street can basically park their trucks and run their business from in front of my house. Um, it's there every day after 5 p.m. all night and every weekend, including holiday weekends. It's there, you know, from Friday night till whenever the weekend is over. And they block our view and are quite a 
unsightly. Um, I've spoke with the owners briefly and asked them if they could park in front of their own home and they stated that this is where I have always parked and it is legal. Um, I just feel that this shows a disregard for the city streets of Milford and their neighbors and takes advantage of this loophole and the ordinance. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the board can do so at this time. Seeing none, Alderman Vecarelli, agenda item number three, consideration of minutes. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, move to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of Aldermen held on August 6, 2018. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Agenda item number four, Alderman Vecarelli. Consideration of minutes from organizational meeting. Um, there isn't any. Thank you, Alderman Vecarelli. Item number, agenda item number five, Chairman's Report. Um, just like to uh, announce that 9-11 uh, coming, coming up next week at 8.46 a.m. Uh, we're going to have a ceremony at the East Side Fire Station uh, to commemorate the um, terrible tragedy at 9-11. And we're also going to remember our members of our community, Seth Morris, Abnish Patel, and Mike Miller. So you're all invited to attend that ceremony. And that's all I have for now. Open up on the agenda on, uh, item number six, mayor's report and recommendations. Mr. Mayor, is there a report? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Hope everybody had a uh, terrific Labor Day weekend. I know that it was hot and beautiful. Uh, I know that our kids are enjoying the transition back with half days. Uh, our students, I think, are appreciating that uh, ease into the 2018-2019 calendar year. Uh, I do have uh, items on the agenda, 8A through 8E. I respectfully request your consideration and action on those items. I also do want to highlight the fact that Milford's finance director and our finance department um, were again uh, given the uh, GFOA's highest award of excellence for their financial reporting. So kudos to Peter Aradisi and his team. And at this time, I do have a special presentation tonight. Um, Rebecca and David from Team Incorporated, which is a social service agency in our area. Um, do have some highlights of what their organization does to support folks in the community and help provide resources that a lot of uh, people in Milford do take advantage of. Um, so without further ado, I'd uh, ask that uh, David and Rebecca come to the podium. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Board. Uh, I have uh, two, two outcomes tonight. Number one, we first want to thank the City of Milford for the support uh, that is provided to Team Inc. We are a private, not-for-profit human services agency um, and really want to thank not only the City of Milford, uh, but Mayor Blake um, and many of his staff who have really uh, helped to work with, with myself uh, and staff at Team as we coordinate uh, systems of care for some of our most economically disadvantaged and vulnerable uh, households in Milford. Uh, Team's commitment is to the economically disadvantaged and some of our most vulnerable households. Uh, many know us uh, in our work um, with uh, early childhood at the Margaret Egan Community Center um, for young children, uh, preschool program, as well as our home visitation uh, with expectant mothers and, and children under the age of four. Uh, many also know us for our volunteer income tax assistance program that we conduct at the Milford Senior Center 
and also our uh, human services coordination that we do um, uh, with the mayor and his staff at the uh, uh, Milford Department of Health and Human Services. Um, so I'm really appreciative to the mayor and to the local delegation who has really helped. Um, one of our goals has been to increase the awareness of team. Uh, we, we can be a, a very helpful resource to people who find themselves in the, in the most difficult of circumstances. Um, we're also known for our work uh, partnering with the United Way of Milford with the Diaper Bank Initiative. You, I see some familiar faces who may have seen uh, some of the work in that. Um, last year alone, we touched the lives of just over 900 Milford households. Um, every one of them, uh, for the most part, has been underneath 200% of the federal poverty level, which we look at as Connecticut's self-sufficiency standard. Um, many people were commenting on our volunteer income tax assistance program. Uh, the average uh, Milford household income on that tax filing was uh, $27,000 a year. Um, just to give you a little context of some of the households that we've been working with. Um, we're also uh, evidence in working with um, homeless families and helping people uh, you know, mediate some of their housing challenges, which uh, in, beyond child care, housing costs is, is the most significant burden. Um, so we just want to say we're here, um, in addition to saying thank you. Um, and again, Mayor, Mayor Blake has been really helpful for me in my emergent role here at TEAM. Um, TEAM is charged with being available and serving 10 communities, uh, when you, um, from Beacon Falls down to Milford, um, and Sonia Derby, Seymour, Shelton, Oxford, Orange, Woodbridge, uh, and Bethany. And so um, it's been uh, a, a real delight for me to, to, to increase awareness. And so we see this. We've we presented to the Chamber and to the United Way and to a lot of partner agencies. And we're really on the ground in, in programs such as the Bethel um, Center, uh, among others, and really helping people. Um, and so the last thing I wanted to ask is to share um, uh, a video, which is just two minutes long, and it's a testimonial. Um, not only do we want to increase awareness, um, but you know, as a board of directors and for myself, we're really trying to do something that's difficult at times, um, and that's what we call changing hearts and minds. Um, you know, we are we 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 often find ourselves where. Um, uh, in societies where people are so quick to cast judgment on those who may be uh, challenged uh, uh, socially, economically, or environmentally. And so we try to help people really understand that in many cases, in fact, the vast majority through no fault of their own, um, and there are examples clearly of people self-imposing, but through no fault of their own, um, find themselves in um, these unbearable forces bearing, um, coming down on them. And team's job is to cast no judgment, to, but to really connect with them, move them out of a stress or crisis to stability, and then on a path towards self-sufficiency so they don't need our services um, the next day. And so the, the point of this video is you're going to hear from somebody who heard about team at a regional event um, at Warsaw Park in Ansonia. It was an early childhood event with had a lot of communities and leaders coming together, and she heard about team. And so she's just going to tell you her story. Um, and it's only two minutes. Um, and so, and I also want to give a shout out that we didn't have to pay for this video. Um, I actually, um, through our diaper bank work, um, I was able to connect with the uh, child birthing unit at Griffin Hospital. I met with President CEO Pat Charmel, and, the, and their development um, arm was creating videos for the new surgical center. And, and he and the hospital had seen the work that we're able to do in connecting um, hard to reach families through the diaper bank and then being able to connect and partner with them in other ways. And so, I asked if he would be willing to provide um, this video at no cost to team, and, and he and the development um, department said yes, so we're really thankful to them for that. So without further ado, I'd like to um, ask to play the video, and it's two minutes. And after I had my second daughter, Madeline, and I returned from maternity leave back to work with my employer and found out that my position had been dissolved, and now you're having to rely on credit cards to be able to pay things like groceries and the electric bill to keep heat in the house for the kids. I was sitting at home in the rocking chair with my daughter, Madeline, who was a newborn baby, and looking at her saying, how am I going to put diapers on you and how am I going to feed you and how am I going to keep the house warm for you? What I did was I actually remembered I ran into my friend um, at an event at Warsaw Park and she said, hey, you know, I work for this amazing company team. I reached out and contacted team and went into the office later that week and sat down with them. We discussed the early childhood education programs that team had to offer, 
and we uh, found out that Haley did qualify to go into the classroom and we were super excited to hear that. So Haley um, was able to, to get a great education at a low cost. So I went to leave and I was asked to sit back down. We have this amazing diaper bank and we'll be able to provide you with diapers and wipes for your baby. Um, and they also have something called Toys for Kids, which is an amazing program. You go into a place and you think, I'm at my lowest low, I'm gonna be judged. Nobody judged me. They all welcomed me with open arms. And because team helped empower me to get back on my feet, I was able to get back out there and find an amazing job where my heart belonged to. And now my family is thriving. And if it wasn't for team, I don't think we would be where we are today. And thank you for your time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, David and, and Rebecca. It was, it was uh, really, really good. Thank you for bringing it to us. Next on the agenda, number, agenda item number eight, moving on to new business. Alderman Vaccarelli, agenda item number 8A. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the request for the appointment of Jessica Stram of 33 Railroad Ave as a member of the Economic Development Commission to fill the present vacancy term expire in 12-31-20. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. At this time, will the newly appointed commission member come to the front of the auditorium to be sworn in by our city clerk? Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or sincerely affirm that you will uphold your duties and responsibilities as a member of the Economic Development Commission for the City of Milford to the best of your ability to help you out or under the pain or penalty for perjury or false statement? Alderman Vaccarelli, agenda item 8B. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the request per the attached recommendations of the Planning and Zoning Commission dated August 8, 2018, pursuant to CGS 8-24 of the Connecticut General Statutes for the lease of room number 130 and a fenced-in playground area located in the Margaret Egan Center, 35 Matthew Street, Milford to Milford Preschool, LLC, and to authorize the recreation director, the city attorney, and mayor to take all steps necessary, including signing all documents to effectuate said lease. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Alderman German. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to, I'm not sure who, um, maybe Mr. Mayor. Uh, two questions, is this, well, what's the square footage, first of all, of the rental space, and is this lease transferable if they were to, I don't know, change, change ownership? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you to Alderman German. Uh, the impetus behind this 824 is that 
Uh, there was a previous owner to the same preschool. Uh, there was a transfer in ownership. And because there was a transfer in ownership in the prior uh, lease agreement was not transferable, that's why it's uh, before you tonight. Uh, as to the square feet that's listed in the agreement, it's 1,278 square feet. I think that answers your questions, but if it doesn't. Thank you. Alderman Ginatazio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you um, to Mayor Blake. Mayor Blake, would you know the dollar amount associated with this lease? Mr. Chairman, through you to Alderman Giantasio, it is 15% of the gross revenue or $3,000, whichever is greater. Thank you. Alderman Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mayor, do you know if the director of Milford Preschool is here tonight? No? I don't believe okay. so. Thank you. Is there any more discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Alderman Vaccarelli, agenda item 8C. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the request for the attached agreement between the City of Milford and the Southern and the South Central Connecticut Regional Water Authority for permanent resurfacing and pavement restoration in association with the RWA's Beneville Road Capital Project and to authorize the Public Works Director and Mayor to take all steps necessary, including signing all documents to effectuate said agreement. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Alderman Vaccarelli, agenda item 8D. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the request for the attached resolution regarding request for proposals for the lease purchase of certain fire department equipment vehicles. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Um, Mayor. If the record can reflect that there is a Scrivener's error in the resolution. Uh, as you recall, this is an almost identical resolution to one that you passed uh, approximately two years ago for public works vehicles. Uh, the only difference being that this uh, is a resolution that has to do with the leases of vehicles for the fire department. Uh, almost exact language, uh, and it was based on that model resolution from a few years ago that was adopted. Uh, it looks like Director of Public Works uh, is still in that last uh, set of paragraphs. If the record could just reflect that the intent was for the fire chief uh, to be in that last paragraph instead of director of public works, uh, because again, this resolution pertains to fire apparatus and fire vehicles. That's done. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, with the uh, Scribner's error corrected, uh, is there any discussion on that? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Alderman Vaccarelli, agenda item 8E. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the resolution regarding the bid waiver for the lease purchase of demo ambulance trans 
reporting unit. A motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Alderman Ginatazio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to the mayor, Mayor Blake. What prompted the uh, would be, the, I'm sorry, excuse me, what prompted the bid waiver? Mr. Chairman, uh, through you to Alderman Giantasio, um, it's my understanding that there was a model that came up that's significantly cheaper uh, from a vendor that we have just recently purchased another rescue truck uh, for the fire department. Um, we do have uh, Chief Begley in the audience who may be able to give more details about what prompted this, but uh, there is a, a demo model that's available practically or for all intents and purposes, uh, brand new. It hasn't been used in action, just as a, a demonstration model by the manufacturer. Um, there was the offer for this model. Uh, we have purchased demo models of this identical vehicle in the past, and uh, this came up. It's over our $25,000 bid threshold, and that's why it's before uh, this board tonight. Just to follow up, Mr. Chairman, through you to the mayor or the gentleman that's here representing the fire department. Um, are we to assume that being that it's a demo that we are purchasing this at a lesser price? Yes. And would we know the percentage of the, the, the savings? Chief Begley, do you have the, the numbers? Chief Begley, Milford Fire. All right. So um, I put out a request for proposal for this apparatus probably about a year ago. And uh, <clears throat> it went out for immediate delivery and it went through the whole process. And this, um, this vendor bid the truck and we received a 2016 model, or 2017, excuse me. And um, this year he has a 2018 that's on the lot, a sister truck to the one we have now. But the, the issue is um, he will hold the price for us for this demo model if we waiver the bid because if it, there are other departments right now then are uh, buying for that vehicle. So right now he's holding the price at uh, 240000 I believe it is, 42000 And um, going, if we have to spec this truck out, we have to go into a new chassis and model year, so we're going to end up paying the difference for a 2019 model plus the tariffs that are coming into effect throughout the whole industry. So we're going to save a considerable amount. So right now it's, it's, a, it's a very competitive you know, time for, for models that are on the lot, demos that are available for media delivery. So those are the numbers I have, it's like 242. Well, I, I appreciate the explanation. Thank you. Alderman Smith. Thank you. Chief? <laughs> Sorry, just... Just one quick question. You, you mentioned that this is, waving, is being waived because it's a question of time. It's expediency, not because, as the mayor explained, this is over $25,000. That's why it's, this waiver is before us. But waiving the purchasing process in order to take advantage of this opportunity, whereas if you didn't waive it, there would be a longer, more time-consuming process. Correct. So it's specific to a demo model or a model that's available for immediate delivery so that if there's a leftover and it meets all the specifications for the fire department that we can actively bid on it and we can be more competitive uh, before another department comes in and takes it because if I have to go through the whole process of the of bidding it or putting out an RFP the vehicle won't be there by the time that's all done thank you any other questions Alderman Vitale thank you mr. chair through good evening chief good evening. you alluded to a savings of the you said that the demo was 242000 approximately. What would a new truck go for? And if you put it out, went out the bid, what, what, so what is the savings occurred on this? So um, 242 is held to the 2017 price of the truck that I just put out for proposal, so uh, that we just received. Uh, I think we received it in January. Um, if you add on, I don't know what the manufacturer's market would be for a, for a 2019 model. The one that's on the, he's holding the price of the 17 for us for the 18 model. So there was already a markup for that cabin chassis, but because we were, we just bought this other one from him a year ago, he's going to hold the price for the set for the uh, 17 model. So we're basically getting it at a cabin chassis of a, a 2017 model. But if we, if we have to go through the spec process or this truck gets sold, 
we're into a 2019 model now year. So I don't know what the percentage from a Ford dealer would be. You know, every year they go up. They mark up, I don't know, two thousand, three thousand dollars on a cabin chassis, whatever it is. And and uh, I don't know what the whole manufacturer, the Horton manufacturer, the one who does the box part of the ambulance for a completed model, what the difference would be. But I know there's tariffs coming throughout the industry, and I've already been told that for uh, bidding on fire trucks, for instance, that there's a, a 4.5 percent industry-wide tariff that's going to be coming into effect. I think it takes effect in September, and I've been told that through the uh, apparatus manufacturers for the fire trucks. So better understand it that we bought a 218, 2018, for X amount of dollars for 242. 242 is a completed ambulance. Right. And so the idea here is that the 17 is going to be costing us 242. A two, the, the one that we purchased last year was a 2017 F550 Ford pickup truck cabin chassis on a Horton ambulance body. That whole package completed to us, delivered, and with all the state of Connecticut specifications and all that was $242,000. Yeah. And that went out RFP, and I went out and got uh, a couple of vendors that came in and bid here. I went through the whole process, and I can get you the, if you want. I can get so again, you do you know what we're saving? Well, it would be the markup for the cabin chassis to a two. And you don't really, you really I don't, don't know, know. Off hand. I wouldn't know what Ford's markup would be, um, but it would be the same as like a Chevy or any other dealer that would mark up every year, and uh, that's just for the cabin chassis part of it, and. Um, now that if we don't buy this vehicle, and if you don't, if we don't do this, that's that's fine. I'll go through the regular process, but we're going to pay the markup on so the tariff your, as well. Your understanding is that we're saving a great deal of money. Absolutely, we are saving money because they're actually holding a 2017 price for us right now on a 2018. It's sitting on a lot. That if that goes, because that's the last one left, I have to buy now a 2019 if I spec it out tomorrow morning, and I have to go through the RFP, and that's, this truck is gone. I'll have to to spend now on a 2019, so two, year, two model years up, plus whatever the tariffs are, because it's after September, I think it was September uh, September 8th or something like that, I don't know when the tariffs go into effect, the percentage thank, increase. Thank you. Yep. Any more discussion on the motion? Thank you very much for your information, Chief. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> agenda item number nine, there is no new business. Agenda, moving on to agenda item number 10, budget memo transfers. Alderman Vaccarelli, agenda item 10A. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the consideration of the budget memo, memo transfers, number 15 and number 16. Fund 10 and Fund 12, FY18. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Alderman Vaccarelli, agenda item number 11, moving on to refunds, 11A. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the refunds in the amount of $44,256.38. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to agenda item number 12, reports of standing committees. Alderman Smith, would you like to report on the ordinance committee, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we had postponed a, um, a proposed ordinance in the August meeting uh, with the intention of reintroducing it or to uh, taking it up in the ordinance committee tonight. Um, that, however, um, because of a lack of uh, further information gathering that we intended to uh, acquire before the next meeting, that having not uh, been totally fulfilled, we have, it was the uh, determination of the leadership to um, postpone it again from this month, and uh, hopefully we will uh, take this up. I know a gentleman came tonight to speak uh, uh, on this particular ordinance. Um, hopefully, we will um, we will take it up for consideration in the October meeting. Thank you, Alderman Smith. Is there any other reports of standing committees? 
Seeing none, uh, we move on to agenda item number 13, reports of any special committees. Is there any reports of any special committees? Seeing none, we'll move on to item number 14, executive session. I will entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss 14A, consideration of settlement of Connecticut self-storage of Connecticut versus City of Milford regarding 33 Schoolhouse Lane, and 14B, consideration of settlement of the Connecticut Post Limited Partnership versus City of Milford regarding 1201 Boston Post Road. Joining us in executive session for items 14A through 14B will be the Mayor, Ben Blake, and the City Assessor, Dan Thomas. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, uh, if Attorney uh, John Bircham uh, could also be invited in as well. In addition to the Mayor Ben Blake and the City Assessor Dan Thomas will be the City Attorney John Bertram. Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We're in executive session.
Will the aldermen please take their seats? Alderman Vaccarelli, agenda item 14A. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to authorize settlement in the matter of the Connecticut Self Storage of Connecticut LLC versus the City of Milford in regards to 33 Schoolhouse Lane in accordance with the recommendations of the City Attorney and the City Assessor as discussed in executive session. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Alderman Vaccarelli, agenda item number 14B. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to authorize settlement in the matter of the Connecticut Post Limited Partnership versus City of Milford in regards to 1201 Boston Post Road in accordance with the recommendations of the city attorney and city assessor as discussed in executive session. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Well, ladies and gentlemen of the board, I would last like to ask you to stand and uh, give us a moment of silence for Jerry Winowski, who has passed away this last two weeks. Uh, he was a member of many of the boards in Milford, and he served on this board as well, uh, very honorably. So would you please stand and a moment of silence for Jerry. Thank you very much. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved, Mr. Chairman. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.